so uh, as he continues to dominate on the links, the kid just lives a life, does he not? Uh, he's in Arizona, which is <laughs> one of my favorite places to be at all, all across the country, and he's playing golf down there in looks like Scottsdale, Phoenix area. I am so jealous of him. That is one of the most beautiful areas uh, around the country, so... Shout out C Money. Yeah, we're thinking about C Money today. We've got a big <laughs> one coming up on the HAN Network tonight. Wilton and Fairfield Ward and Boys Hoops. Obviously, Chris was with us last year for this game from the Z, and we've got high expectations for this one, Kev. Two of the best teams in the conference right now. Uh, we caught up with Coach Garriak yesterday. We're going to catch up with Coach Swaller later on today to continue getting ready for this game. But there's a lot of buzz about it. I know we're excited. Our first look at both these teams in this 2017-2018 year. I think this is actually going to be the first basketball game that we're really going to see come down to the wire this year. It's going to have that playoff feel too. First one for us to experience here on the HN Network. It's going to be a fun one tonight. It's going to be loud in the gym as well. I want to see how the players adapt to a kind of a, a strong atmosphere that's going to be at Fairfield Ward tonight from both student sessions. We know, the, we know the Mustang student session is going to show up big. We also know how well the, the tribe, the role tribe, how they, how they travel with this Wilton Warriors team after what we saw from last year. They have a great student session. So it's going to be a lot of fun tonight. Of course, of course what we're going to see on the court is going to be even better. Two, two great basketball teams that are off to a great start. Two lineups that are loaded with talent. Uh, of course, a good battle. I think Sean Conway, we're going to see the top player in the conference, I think, tonight. Uh, right now, averaging around 30 points per game, coming off a quadruple double last week. So uh, we're in for a fun one tonight, Frank. Certainly the top player in the conference where we sit right now. Three games total in action tonight for Hoops, boys and girls basketball. And all three of them are incredibly interesting. Uh, for boys basketball, obviously the game we're covering. Then you also have... Norwalk and Trinity Catholic going on in boys basketball. That's a great matchup with the way Norwalk is playing right now and the contender we believe Trinity to be. But another storyline in that game right there, Kevin, no fans allowed at the game after the altercation post-freshman game last week. It is just going to be a couple members of the press and the two teams there. So that's really going to be an interesting atmosphere uh, for these squads there. I that's going to be very interesting. You you look at it this way, it's going to have a different feel. You're used to you know having fans at the game, you know cheering on uh, not only you but you know cheering against you, and you have you know fans in your face. But now it's going to be pretty quiet. So that's that's something you're obviously if you're in that gym, if you're you know part of the press or you're on the coaching staff. You ha you're going to hear a lot of chatter on the court that you're not usually hearing on a normal game. Especially, too, in a game like this one. Norwalk and Trinity separated right now by half a game in the standings in the right. East Division with Trinity 4-1 and one to Norwalk's 3-1. and one. But the Bears playing much better than I think a lot of people expected. Trinity is starting to come together now. I think we find out how for real Norwalk is tonight in this game. And it's going to fall on the sh shoulders of Tommy Benincasso, in my opinion. And you're right. Tommy Benincasso is starting off red hot here for the Norwalk Bears this season. Coach Keys is doing a great job, you know, kind of retooling the lineup from last year. A little bit of a tough year in 2016-2017, but he bounces back to a good start here this season. Obviously, we know how good of a lineup Trinity has. It's just in terms of can they show up tonight. And, yes, I agree. Even if... We're going to learn a lot about Norwalk. We're also going to learn a lot about Trinity. If they lose tonight, that's a big question mark for the rest of the season uh, there for the Crusaders. And then on the other side of the bracket, a really big matchup at the Z when Fairfield Ward, undefeated, tied for first in the conference, travels to Wilton to take on the Warriors, uh, the Lady Warriors, excuse me. Yeah, that's going to be a good matchup, too, over there in girls basketball. you got two top teams. Wilton on a little bit of a slide, but still playing great basketball. Uh, two, you know, a couple tough losses throughout the last couple weeks, but we expect to see another, not just in the boys' side of Fairfield Ward and Wilton, also on the girls' side. We're going to see a good matchup there. Libby McKenna, how does she play tonight? Uh, it's, that's going to be a fun one over at the Z. Looking forward to seeing you know, how that game progresses throughout the night. Well, we had some big ones going on last night in the FCAC. Arguably the biggest upset of the season, and it took place just last night, Kev. Getting their first win of the year were the Fairfield Ludlow Falcons in boys basketball. They took down Trumbull 57 to 52. A couple of players going off for the Falcons. You had Jeff Myers with 17, Cooper Nielsen with 16, and uh, uh, Jaden Taboy also went in double digits with 11 points. This is big for Fairfield Ludlow, finally getting that monkey off your back. You get the first win of the season, but more importantly, in my opinion, Trumbull was exposed last night, and people, other teams in this conference, 
we're able to find out where the Eagles are vulnerable. They are, and that's a huge win for the Falcons last night. It's got to be a boost of confidence. I really like Cooper Nielsen. I think he's a strong player, quick player, that senior guard. You know, he can shoot the ball. He can go to that. He can go to the hoop as well. So a uh, strong player in Nielsen. But for Trumbull, you know, I, they're a team just like a lot of these teams in the FCAC. If you have a night where shots aren't falling, no, three yeah. point shots aren't falling, you're yep. going to get exposed, and you can't dunk it inside to a tall guy. It's that's going to be an issue with a lot of these teams in the FCAC. There's not that big guy. You're going to see it tonight, too. There's no one over the height of maybe 6'4 tonight. So it's going to be a lot of shooters tonight, and it's a lot of shooters around the conference. So for Trumbull, I think if they want to be successful throughout the season, still a strong team. They have some great talent on that team. But if their shots aren't falling from outside the range, that's, that's going to be a tough night for Trumbull you know, if you look on through the rest of the season. Well, you talk about the big guys, and I think that's a big reason why a lot of us were high on Trinity before the season because of the combination of Moise and Catavio down low. Uh, it's a real tough matchup problem for almost every team in the conference. And I think we are heading towards a league where it's shooter-oriented. Teams want to go with that super fast pace. You're looking to get 50, 60 shots up a game which is a lot in a 32-minute span. They want to run the floor. They want to put up threes. And you know what? They're trying to capitalize. For me right now, Evan Gutowski, the junior for Trumbull, he's had a frustrating month. He's a guy that really needs to sort of settle down and get back into his own because he could be a great player in this league. And it was tough because he's struggling, couldn't get it going down low. J.P. Froma got didn't have it last night as well. He was a guy we saw step up in that big game over Staples. So... Listen, you're right. Trumbull is still very, very young, yeah, and they're probably a year away. But they jump out to this great start, and I think we were already all so high on Trumbull. You know, maybe we were fooled into thinking, "Wow, it's going to be much like last year. They'll run the table in the regular season, and then they'll find it. Uh, you know, find a way this year in the postseason to get onto the championship game for the first time in 20, 30 years." Well, they looked so good against Staples when we saw them a week ago. They, you know, running up and down the floor. They were just they can move in transition. That was their game, really. They're forcing turnovers in the defensive end, moving up the court, getting quick baskets, jumping out to big leads. So, you know, for them, while they still have a lot of speed, Evan, you're right. Evan Katowski has to get a little bit more involved down low in the paint because use him. To, towards his advantage, he's good on the post. Don't get down. Maybe him, you know, gets get a couple good post plays down low, get some quick buckets. But you know, obviously, Tamon Williams is going to be good. Chris Brown's still going to have a good year. Uh, just for Trumbull, the question is, can they bounce back after a loss like this to Ludlow? Yes, they're still very young, maybe even a year away. But I know Coach Buddy Bray, still a fantastic coach. He's going to. Find a way to get this Eagles team into the postseason. I'm looking at the calendar right now, Kevin. I've been trying to find a game. Uh, all morning, I've been trying to find a game that syncs up where we're going to get to see Bridgeport Central. Yeah. I am high on the Hilltoppers right now. And I told you early on in the year, I think Bridgeport Central, uh, without a doubt, is a playoff team. Yep. I think they're going to get into that top eight. I think they might even win a game. They continue to to play well, do the right things. Another win for them last night as they take down Staples, 82-69. Two players with 20-plus points, and Rajiv Walker just missing out on 19. Uh, Dejan Fulton leading all central players with 21. Raycon Wiley, Riley excuse me, with 20 points there. The Hilltoppers are starting to look like a Bridgeport team of the past when the city schools really used to dominate this conference. Oh, I, the, it was such good basketball. When those cities, when those city I, that, teams you, dominated, yeah. oh, that was some great basketball. And it's good to see Bridgeport Central is back here. And the girls' teams, too, is girls still team hanging that, in there. They're still playing well. So for Central, they're legit. They're gonna. I have full faith that they're making the FCAC postseason. I think they're even going to make a state berth as well. So without a doubt, Central is a playoff team this year. They're a scary team to play against because they're athletic. They can move the ball up and down the floor. They can shoot. They can do it all, and they can move in transition. That I, I remember when we were at that Central girls game when they played McMahon, the boys team practice after. Took a quick little you know, five-minute glance at their practice. These boys can run. They can run fast. They work hard. They get to the dirty areas. They're doing yeah. a really good job. Uh, as we get a look at the rest of that Central schedule right there, maybe at home Monday the 12th. Against Trinity Catholic. I like that. I that like could that be a game. good game. See where they stack yeah. up. They've got Bassett coming up as well. That's going to be a really good matchup. Yeah. Bassett and Central both back at the peaks of their game. So, listen, a lot of good things happening there. Uh, we're going to take a break shortly here. We've got Coach Ryan Swallers about to join us. I do want to give a shout-out, though. 
because you know I'm on them, and I've got them very, very close to getting into that top eight for the tournament. The Lady Falcons out of Ludlow, giving <laughs> Trumbull lots of fits last night. They fell 42-35, uh, and a big part of that really was a big run by Trumbull in the third quarter where they outscored Ludlow by eight. I'll let that's, you do the math on that that's, one. That's the difference right there. Uh, but I tell you what, you know, this is, a Trump, this is a Ludlow team right now that plays very, very good defense. They are hard workers. They cause fits down low for team. If they can find a way to limit turnovers and just get one girl to step up as a scorer, early upset in the FCAC tournament oh, yeah. might be where I'm trending towards next. And you got to look at the three Bridgets. Those, you know, all three Bridgets are extreme talent on this Fairfield Ludlow team. And you're right. That has to, you have to look at that game last night against Trumbull. And you have to kind of take a look at that, not just for Ludlow's sake, but for the rest of the conference sake. If you're able to kind of disrupt the Eagles a little bit, you, know, you could really hang with them. And, you know, to hold them to 42 points, too, that just shows the type of defense that they were having last night, too, for the Falcons. 21-20, they led at the half. So uh, it's, we've seen Ludlow with a lead a couple times at the half. Coach Kinsley now just really uh, trying to find a way to get that four quarters worth of play. They're too. They're, they're, they're young. They're young. They they're are. a year away, too. They're close. They're right there. I still think they have a, you know, a good chance this season, but I think next year – this is going to be a good Falcons team next year as well. Ton. Eighth place. They okay. just got to get into the tournament, I like the and I think Coach Tobish knows uh, he would be a little worried in that 1-8 <laughs> matchup. Let's step aside here on Nutmeg Sports. When we get back, we are joined by the head coach of the Fairfield Ward Mustangs, Ryan Swagger, as Swaller, excuse me, as he gets ready for tonight's big matchup against Wilton from Fairfield Ward High School. That's next on the HA Network. We know it's your busy season and that's why Walter Stewart's Market is here to make things easy by offering the best of autumn under one roof. Walter Stewart's Market is your local one-stop fall shop. There are so many seasonal flavors to savor and Stewart's has them all. From Blue Jay Orchard's local cider donuts to Vermont Farmstead cheddar and all of your favorite varieties of local apples and pears. Walter Stewart's Market, 229 Elm Street, New Canaan and find us at stewartsmarket.com. We Want a new experience in car buying? No aggravation, no confrontation, just answers to all your questions. SCAP Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Car buying the way you want it to be. With one of the largest selections of new two- and four-door Jeep Wranglers available, we are Connecticut's Wrangler headquarters. Family owned and operated for over 50 years. Call, click, or stop in today. Save thousands at the 2018 Auto Show event and start something new sales event. Now through January 31st. At Galt, we always put you first. As your full-service home heating partner, we provide expert delivery, installation, and maintenance for all your heating needs with knowledgeable, friendly professionals that give you peace of mind 24-7. Galt Family Companies, you first since 1863. If you've ever thought about owning a motor coach or learning about what it's like to travel the open road in superior style and comfort, then contact Dave's RV Center in Danbury, Connecticut. Offering the best quality Class A motorhomes from Newmar, travel trailers and fifth wheel lines from Surveyor, and a toy hauler line from Work and Play. Choose from Newmar's Gas Line, Base Star and Canyon Star, or from Newmar's Diesel Line, Ventana and Dutch Star. And with unparalleled service and maintenance, Dave's RV is committed to keeping you and your motor coach safely on the road and enjoying it to the fullest. Stop by their showroom, 2 Industrial Plaza Road, Danbury, Connecticut, or call 877-483-3866. If you've ever had a sports injury or slip and fall that needs immediate care, Coastal Orthopedics Walk-In Urgent Care gives you direct access to orthopedic specialists fast without an appointment. Biking, golf, tennis, soccer, whatever the sports injury is, sprain or fracture, Coastal Orthopedics Walk-In Urgent Care can help. Open seven days a week now at three locations. The I Park Building at 761 Main Avenue, Norwalk, 36 Old Kings Highway South in Darien, or in the Westport Medical Center at 323 Riverside Avenue, Westport. Go to CoastalOrthoCT.com. Like them on Facebook. We know it's your business. Welcome back to Nutmeg Sports on the HA Network, Thursday, January 18th, as we continue to get ready for tonight's big basketball game in the FCAC. Fairfield Ward hosting the Wilton Warriors. Frank Renito alongside Kevin Coleman in studio, and we are very happy to welcome on now the head coach of the Fairfield Ward Mustangs. He is Coach Ryan Swaller. And, Coach, thank you so much for taking time with us this afternoon. Uh, happy to speak with you. What a great start it has been for the Fairfield Ward Mustangs this season. Yeah, it has. And before then, just thank you for having me on, uh, Frank and Kevin as well. Um, you know, we're off to a, a good start, you know, at 6-2 and two and, you know, on the feet in FCX. So being here, you know, our expectations were to be out this level, but we're playing well. You know, we continue to, uh, you know, just keep getting better each day. 
Uh, six and two, you mentioned undefeated in FCX. You guys are riding a five-game win streak. Your last loss, that tough one against Fairfield Prep. I, I mean, what changed amongst this team after that prep game that night that you guys are really feeling it right now? Uh, I think the focus of what we uh, started to instill even more than we did before the prep game was defense. I mean, prep team scoring 87 points was just way too many points um, to give up, especially if you wanted to, you know, have a successful season throughout the year. Defense became a focus. So we spent more than half our time at practice focused on defense, you know, from that point forward. And I feel that we've been in a better job of uh, defensively stopping people and obviously still continue to score the ball, you know, as we've been throughout the year. And coach, I think one of the biggest stories obviously has to be Sean Conway, uh, the senior captain for you this year, leading the league, leading the conference in scoring, averaging just around 30 points per game. How is he, how is he making your job and your life much easier when he's on the basketball court for you so far this season? Yeah, he, I mean, he's a complete player. Um, the ability to score the ball is obviously standing out now where he's shooting the ball well. You know, he's getting the free throw line. He's scoring the ball. Um, what isn't as, I guess, noticeable, but I've always seen it as a player, is his ability to get the rebound between defense and offensively and control the boards. Um, you know, for me, I just know that with him on the floor, good decisions we made. Um, you know, he'll find the open guy. You know, we have five, six guys could knock down the three. It just makes life a little easier knowing that you have, you know, a playmaker on the floor to do a variety of things. Well, it's not just he's a playmaker in the offensive end. He's also a playmaker on the defensive end. Talk about how much he's improved on the defensive, defensive side of the ball. Yeah, he's, uh, he's always been a very good player in reading passing lanes and getting into passing lanes for steals, but he's doing a much better job of, you know, getting the help side, um, you know, stopping penetration for the dribble and um, actually be able to get up there and block some shots. You know, his length, his height, he's grown a couple inches this past year. He's gotten about 15, 20 pounds stronger, so his ability to uh, go up against a variety of offensive players from the one to the five has really uh, helped us be a little more versatile on the defense end. Uh, well, obviously, if you didn't know about him before these past few weeks, he's burst onto the scenes with that big quadruple double uh, just a couple of games ago. So everyone is aware of his versatility now. But uh, you talk about having a bevy of players, Coach, capable of hitting the three. I, I mean, what kind of a matchup can we expect tonight when the Wilton Warriors come into town? And, I mean, Kevin and I are setting the over-under around 18 and a half uh, total <laughs> three-pointers in the game tonight from both teams. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think if you you double that, that'd be for the team total for both um, adding together. It's about there. I mean, both of us play similar types of games. Um, I know Wilton, you know, wants to you know try to get 15 to 23s a game. You know, similar to us, we have it spaced out as well. A lot of good shooters within. So I mean, I think it's gonna be a fun game. You know, up tempo. You know, a lot of you know up and down pace. A lot of you know runs by both teams, and you know at the end we'll up after. 32 minutes. Uh, and you talked about the turnaround defensively for this team over these past five games. You know, how important in a game against a high scoring Wilton team is the effort on the defensive end going to be for your boys tonight? Yeah, that's, I mean, we spent majority of practice yesterday was all on defense. Um, within there, you know, they have four guys that could score the ball pretty well. You know, we know they all could shoot it. They all want to get to the hole and to the free throw line. So we focused on defensive principles will be and then within there it's going to be 32 minutes of energy you know they're going to strength ahead um you know just like us you know they're at the top division they want to stay there and that's you know what our mindset is of our division we want to get one step closer to states and within there you know every game matters when you get down to uh february looking into march yeah it's for the states getting a home game so tonight but you know with it you, we know it's uh, see you know where we stand at game you know game number nine. Well, you bring up a good point. Both of you guys sitting there right around the top of the division. You were in a similar situation with last year's squad uh, heading into this game. What's your message going to be to the guys now heading into the second half of the season and how to maintain this level of play the Mustangs have had so far? I said you know tonight is just as if any other game, you know, we got to take it a game at a time, just like as I told them Tuesday against West Hill. Uh, it's our home court. You know, last year they were home. This year we're at our home court. 
you know, when you're home, you seem to be a little more comfortable. You seem to be a little bit more, you know, energetic. So I'm hoping to carry that energy into the game tonight. Um, and then obviously from this point forward, it's just we got to continue to get better defensively and obviously offensively. We got to continue to be ready and prepared for the variety of defenses that have been thrown at us and will continue to be thrown at us to try to, uh, you know, catch us off guard. So it's just being prepared and, you know, ready to go in each and every game, you know, with the same mindset of defense first and then uh, from there. And, Coach, two players that kind of stick out to me are Dan Fitzpatrick and Jeff Saganos. For you, the junior Saganos has stepped up big and played some good minutes for the Mustangs and for your team this year. And how, especially during this week, getting ready for this game tonight against the Wilton Warriors, how do you prepare your team emotionally, how to keep their emotions in check? Obviously, it's going to be a big crowd. We know the Wilton student section travels well. Your student section is going to show up in numbers. How do you remind your team to kind of keep those emotions in check? Yeah, I mean, with the, the two players you mentioned, Danny and uh, Jeff have both, you know, been great. You know, one, distribute the ball when needed, knock down the open shot. And, uh, you know, Jeff, particularly defensively, has really stepped up the last few games for us um, and being a defensive kind of specialist. Um, within there, you know, the energy is going to be there. So it's kind of just keeping them, I guess you'd say, contained until the tip. You don't want to use too much energy in the warm-ups with the crowd. Um, but as I said, it's a, it's a great opportunity to kind of, you know, we plan on playing, you know, late into the season throughout. So it's a great opportunity for the crowd that will be experiencing going into hopefully the FCX and going into the States that, you know, for us, we'll, we'll learn from it. So we'll, we'll see how we are, but I know I don't have to worry about them bringing their energy level up because I know we'll be there from the, the tip to, to the end of the game. Uh, well, my last question for you is, as you talk about playing deep into the end of the season, uh, you guys were in the FCAC and state tournament last year. You know, if this team is going to find themselves playing for an FCAC championship or going on a run in the state tournament, what is special about this year's group that stood out to you so far? Uh, togetherness. I mean, they really trust one another. They enjoy being around each other. Um, you know, within there, that that faith, you know, Sean's a great player, but the group around him is pretty special. Um, each one of them, you know, is buying into their roles. Each one of them is producing above and beyond of their roles. Um, you know, where, uh, and I have him, you know, coming in and playing as the five where he's adapted from a three to a five and he's rebounding the ball. He's getting steals. He's getting assists for me. So it's, uh, it's just a group as a whole. Um, you know, it's been a fun year with the group, you know, practice, they're ready to practice each and every day, uh, and get better each day. So they look at it as, you know, they're enjoying games which the way it should be well coach we really appreciate you taking time with us it's been a lot of fun uh so far for the mustangs and we can't wait to see them live tonight should be a great game uh from inside the gym at fairfield ward yeah, and thank you so much and uh can't wait to see you tonight all right should be a lot of fun thank you again that was the head coach ryan right. swaller of the fairfield ward mustangs currently atop the east division kev and you know it, it was a Fairfield Ward team. A lot of guys didn't have the best read on early on this season, but uh, they're playing extremely well, and I can't wait to get a look at them tonight. We're going to have more on this game when we get back after the break. There's more Nutmeg Sports next on the HAN Network. Well, there's still a bite out on the water. Most anglers have decided to stow the gear for the winter. Just because Mother Nature isn't cooperating doesn't mean you can't see the latest models of all your favorite gear. With two convenient locations, it couldn't be easier to get your fix of summer. Boater, beach bum, fisherman, or simply love the New England coast, this is a unique place to shop. The Dock Shop, 51 Tokenique Road, Darien, 609 Riverside Avenue, Westport, or on the web, dockshop.com. At Ring's End, we say it's time to re-love your home. Time to refresh and reinvigorate the way you live. And whether you're redoing something big or small, remember the letters R-E stand for Ring's End. We're the new model in home remodeling. At Budget Blinds, 
we're in business to frame the light, the day, and the night. So we give you an exclusive combination of high style, expert service, our no surprises pricing, and our no questions asked warranty. We believe that everyone, at every budget, deserves style and service. Isn't that a beautiful place to be? Our thanks again to Coach Swaller, and we look forward to seeing him and the Mustangs tonight. 7 p.m. tip-off, as we mentioned, 6.50. Kevin and I are on the air, and Kev, just a couple minutes left here. Let's look ahead to tonight. A couple key things, I think, in today's uh, tonight's game I want to look out for. Number one is obviously going to be three-point shooting. Both these teams are going to throw it up from behind the arc. They're very good uh, at three-point shot. Whoever can shoot consistently in the early quarters, in my opinion, going to have a major advantage, obviously. Yeah, that first quarter is so important. You look back at last year's game, Ward got off to that 8 nothing start. Then Wilton started to climb their way back, but it was Ward that entire first half that took over that game and looked like going into halftime, Ward was going to continue that tread. Now Wilton in the second half picked things up. They were hitting their shots. So tonight, with Wilton being on the road last year, they were at the Z. Wilton's got to hit their shots early on, force some turnovers. Take Conway out of the game if you're the Wilton Warriors. Now, if you're the Ward Mustangs, Conway, obviously you know, is going to be a big factor, but it's the guys like Dan Fitzpatrick and Jeff Saganos, the junior, my X factor tonight. I think he's going to come up with some big buckets tonight as well. And, of course, on, on Wilton's side, a guy who is off to a fantastic start is Scott Cunningham. I mean, the guy is playing lights out basketball right now, so uh, a lot of shooters tonight. So it's, it could be, I think it's going to be fast-paced, a lot of three-point shooting. Uh, I want to see how they do rebounding as well pushing the floor, pushing the tempo. So it is going to be a really fun matchup tonight. You mentioned rebounding and a big turning point in last year's game because we talked about it. Ward really had that game in its grasp. Could have put the sucked the life out of the Z early on in yeah. the third. A lot of hard work uh, down low by the Warriors on the glass brought them back into this game. Robbie Herman. Yeah going to be my X Factor. You're absolutely right. He turned that game last year. He had a couple of big boards, a couple offensive putbacks, a huge block. I think that was when you really started to see momentum flip. I think Herman, at some point in time tonight, is going to have to make uh, a big play to figure out which way this game sways. You're 100% correct. And the reason I think that Wilton made that run last year to the conference uh, title game is because they had such a strong year, is because of their rebounding. They don't have the tallest guys on the court, and they know that. They're okay with that. Robbie Herman and Kyle Schifrin will box out anyone, any size, any height. doesn't matter. They'll put the body and grab that board. So those two as well are big names to keep an eye on tonight. Uh, and you know what? It, they're both teams that know what they have to do. They know their personalities well. They're going to run the floor a lot. You're going to see good ball movement. Yeah. Uh, it's not how do you stop Sean Conway. It's how do you limit him. How do you contain him? Don't let him go for a quadruple-double. Realistically, at this point, a double-double is probably, you know, a victory for other teams. But uh, are we going to see him influence the game as a passer, as a rebounder, as a defender outside of getting his points? That's a big thing to keep an eye on. Yeah, he can do it all. He and really I think, can. I think the best part of his game is when he gets to the top of the key, beats a defender, hits a mid-range shot right at the elbow. So will has got to keep an eye on that. Uh, and there's going to be a lot of emotions as well. Obviously, Antonio Brancato. Comes back to Ward for the first time since he transferred to Wilton. So many storylines, and we will have them all right here on the AJN Network. Kevin and I will be on the air with you. 6.50 from Fairfield Ward High School. Tip-off is set for 7 o'clock. Another great week of Nutmeg Sports. We're back on Monday to do it all again. But before that, we'll see you tonight at Fairfield Ward with Kevin Coleman. I'm Frank Arnito. We'll see you next time on the AJN Network.